couple of moves made. There's been a couple of moves made within the quarterback position of the Minnesota Vikings. This is Realistic Randy of the Mediocre Best Sports Podcast, and this really isn't surprising. Uh, Sam Bradford, after getting surgery on his left knee on Tuesday after suffering a non-contact injury in week one against the Saints, uh, he's been designated to the injured reserve. And Teddy Bridgewater, meanwhile, who was formerly on the pup list, has been officially activated to the 53-man roster of the Minnesota Vikings. So it's not much really of a surprise because after that week five game against the Chicago Bears, in which the Vikings threw Sam Bradford out there, not to say that they forced him out there or anything like that, but after Sam Bradford attempted to make a comeback after four weeks uh, or three weeks, three and a half weeks after suffering that non-contact injury, Soldier Field against the Chicago Bears, he looked like he wanted no parts of being out there. He looked like he was throwing himself on the ground instead of, you know, taking those hits, which obviously why would you want to take hits in the first place? But he looked like he just couldn't plant on that left leg whatsoever. He looked very, very uncomfortable, and it was very uncomfortable to watch. But we'll talk about that in just a second. But real quick, rest in peace to Roy Holiday. Tragically lost his life after crashing his plane. When you never see, whenever you see things like this, especially, you know, someone who had, you know, any, any death is tragic, okay? We're not going to power rank deaths or, you know, say, oh, whose death is, is worse than the others. We're not going to do that. But whenever you, you see someone seemingly enjoying their life, especially in retirement, you know, all of a sudden we live in a world, not necessarily now, but really since the beginning of time where, you could just be minding your own business. You could just be doing your own thing. And then all of a sudden, it could just be over. And without a moment's notice, it could all just end. So we understand that. But um, I'm going to say something a little bit similar to uh, to what I said about uh, Jose Fernandez, in which he uh, tragically lost his life, I believe, what, a year ago in a boating accident? Uh, I'm going to say something a little bit similar to that. Uh, and for those that you know are, are new to this, you, know, you can check out the video. I did it. Uh, not too long after it happened actually no whenever they when they were announcing that they were going to do a statue uh, i don't know if they officially made that decision to miami marlins as far as if they were going to ma make a statue for them or not or if it was in the discussions i don't know but i i did a reaction to that i'm not going to hash that again you can go check it out in the archives but anyway uh i went to sleep so the news was announced on tuesday that roy holiday tragically lost his life after crashing his plane went to sleep it, like i said it was just so sad and then I woke up the next day today, this morning, as of this podcast recording on Wednesday. And I saw the uh, TMZ reported uh, they had video footage of what appears to be Roy Halladay's plane going up and down and up and down what appears to be showboating, uh, starting from 100 feet, according to witnesses, and then going all the way down to five feet, as close as five feet, basically skirting the surface of the water before going back up again. And according to witnesses uh, that spoke to TMZ, not only... Was he doing that repeatedly, going up and down and up and down, riding, you know, basically like a roller coaster, except this time in a plane? Not only was he doing that repeatedly, one witness said, quote, he was flying like that all week, aggressively. So, of, of course, you know, death can come out at us at any moment. But unfortunately for Roy Halliday, it appears that a couple of irresponsible decisions uh, tragically took his life. So I uh, wish his family well. Rest in peace to him. And we're just going to move on from there. So. Uh, Sam Bradford, like I said, he's been designated to the injured reserve. That's no shock uh, whatsoever. Uh, talk about that Bears game in which he looked like he wanted no parts of being out there. And the thing is with Sam Bradford, you know, not only is Sam Bradford as far as I, I said after that game in the Chicago Bears game, I called into 1500 ESPN's Viking, Vikings vent line, which I'm sure a lot of Vikings fans are very aware of. You call in after the game. And you give you critique the team, whether they lost. And if you're pissed off, you can tell them what pissed you off in the first place. Or if you saw something that was great and you want to make, you know, just a, a couple of observations, you can make your voice heard. It's a very good show. I've been listening to that show and uh, Mackie and Judd's show and what used to be called, I believe, uh, Judd and Dubay uh, years ago. I believe about three or four years now I've been uh, listening to that show. They're, they're great on 1500 ESPN. But I called in after that game, the Chicago Bears week five. And I said, you know what, after seeing Sam Bradford, the way he was getting up, he couldn't plant on that left leg. I said, you know what, I'm done with Sam Bradford. I think his time with the Minnesota, I said this on the air, his time with the Minnesota Vikings, in my opinion, was officially over after that game. And quite possibly, there's a chance his career may be in jeopardy. And here's the thing, Sam Bradford's toughness should never be questioned at all. He In 2000, last year, Sam Bradford got he played all 15 games that that from the moment he started. So he started in week two last year after uh, Sean Hill started week one because we just traded for Sam Bradford 
uh, after Teddy Bridgewater blew up his knee. He started all all 15 games after week two or starting week two. He got sacked 27 times. He made it through the whole season. That dude, that is a tough-ass quarterback. So his toughness should never be questioned. Unfortunately, with Sam Bradford, it's not a matter of his toughness or anything like that. The dude's a, a, an outstanding quarterback. He's an outstanding quarterback. In fact, when you look at the three quarterbacks that we've had on our roster, you know, Case Keenum, Teddy Bridgewater, and Sam Bradford, all, assuming all of them are healthy, this was a no-brainer. Sam Bradford was the best quarterback. He was making throws out there that Teddy Bridgewater, I'd never seen him make. The rapport that he had with Adam Thielen, I know Case Keenum has rapport with Adam Thielen too, but the rapport that Sam Bradford had with Thielen and Stephon Diggs and Kyle Rudolph was just outstanding. So, you know, the, the dude's a tough quarterback, and he can when he's available, he can make all the throws. He's one of the better quarterbacks in the, league, in the league. I really do believe that when he's healthy. But unfortunately for his entire career, that's been too much of a question mark, and that's not something you want to necessarily move forward with. So I'd be very shocked if the Vikings look at Sam Bradford uh, heading into next year. I think it's time with the Vikings are up. Uh, moving forward, now you're looking at uh, Teddy Bridgewater and Case Keenum. And real quick, uh, last quick point on uh, Sam Bradford. Uh, I know that there was a little bit of uh, division, uh, not division as far as the NFC North, but division amongst the fans and maybe across the league, uh, especially Eagles fans as well, saying that the Vikings were idiots trading for Sam Bradford. And to that, I say, no, they weren't. No, they weren't. Rick Spielman did exactly what he should have done. I would have made that trade 10 out of 10 times after what happened to Teddy Bridgewater. You had a team that was ready, that was built to win as far as the defense was concerned. You had a team that was ready to win, and he made the move necessary to give this team a chance in hell. Okay, so I don't I don't ever regret that trade. They did what they could. They gave Sam Bradford a chance to revive his career. He was already ticked off with Philadelphia after drafting Carson Wentz. You wanted to see, could is that potential still there? And as long as he's healthy, you know, we'll see. But unfortunately for him, after week one, where he had the best protection of his life, he had a non-contact injury, and now we are where we are right now. So unfortunately, his time with the Minnesota Vikings is up, maybe possibly his career. But that dude's a tough-ass quarterback. So I wish him well for the rest of his career. Uh, regardless whatever happens so moving forward uh last week i brought up the whole the the idea as far not the idea but you knew teddy bridgewater was going to be activated so he's been officially activated to the 53 man roster of the minnesota vikings so teddy welcome back uh so now it's just a matter of when is he going to come back because i do believe he's going to come back sometime this year uh you know assuming that case keenum reverts back to being case keenum of old and i brought up the podcast last week i say look Bring him in naturally. Bring him in when the opportunity presents himself. Don't pr don't put Teddy Bridgewater out there just for the hell of it, just because you like him so much. Case, Case Keenum has done a very good job as a backup quarterback. He's done a very, very good job. He's kept this team afloat much more than I thought he would. But Teddy Bridgewater is here. And I say, look, bring him back in when the time is right, okay? So if we're getting smashed by 20 points or, hell, if we're up by 20 points and it's late in the fourth quarter or something like that, then bring them in, okay, sure, and then see what you have from there. But I got a lot of uh, feedback, not necessarily on YouTube. I think it was more so on Facebook uh, and, and maybe some on Twitter as well, but just as far as the uh, the uh just the dismissiveness of Teddy Bridgewater. No, oh, Teddy Bridgewater, oh, he wasn't that good anyway. We got Case Keenum. He's we, He's been doing well. Why fix something that's not broken, which I completely agree with the last part, okay? Don't fix something that's not broken right now. Right now, Case Keenum is doing a good job. He's been practicing with the first team. He's been doing. He's been having that rapport with Adam Thielen. He's not, he hasn't been a train wreck whatsoever, but he hasn't been uh, just the, the godsend of quarterbacks. He hasn't been that either. He's been neither here nor there. He's been very even keeled. He's done a very, very good job, much more than what I thought he would do. But eventually, you can only – this is the best that Case Keenum is going to be, okay? This is the best – he's got – as what Football Outsiders – I mentioned this last week, Football Outsiders last week and still this week as the Minnesota Vikings – as the fourth best pass protecting offensive line in the NFL. Okay. He's got weapons around him. Even with the loss of Dalvin cook, he's got a very shifty running back and Jarek McKenna and Latavius Murray. He's not bad. He's not bad either. Okay. But this is the best that case Keenum is going to be. And the reason why I bring up Teddy Bridgewater and I should have brought this up last week. And I apologize for that, for not driving this point home. I thought about it after I recorded the podcast. I said, damn it. I should have brought this up before, but I'm going to say it right now. As far as why, and I talked about this on uh, uh, Mackie and Judd on uh, Monday. Was it Monday or Tuesday? I can't remember. 
But anyway, I called in. And the reason why, and I'm going to say what I said then, I'm going to say it right now. The reason why I'm so optimistic and why probably a lot of Teddy Bridgewater fans are optimistic as far as if he comes back, and I'm assuming he's going to eventually come back this year, is because of the circumstances. So here's the thing. If you compare Teddy Bridgewater, if you compare Teddy Bridgewater to his last full season in 2015 to Case Keenum right now, they're putting up the same numbers. They're putting up the same numbers. Look, Teddy Bridgewater in 2015, okay? He put up 3,200 yards, 14 touchdowns, 9 picks, and had a quarterback rating of an 88.7. All right, Case Keenum right now, he is on pace for 3,400 yards, 15 touchdowns, 7 picks, and currently has an 88.8 rating. Okay? So, for first of all, that's the first point. For those that are saying, oh, Teddy Bridgewater isn't that good. Case, he's the, he's the savior of this team. Well, okay, he's doing okay. He's doing okay as a backup quarterback. I will give you that. But he hasn't been kicking ass by any means. It's, he's been letting the defense do the work, and he hasn't crashed the ship, okay? That's just, let's just call it what it is. And here's the second point of that. Both quarterbacks putting up the same numbers, but there's a major difference. In 2015, football outsiders had the Minnesota Vikings ranked as the 29th ranked pass protecting offensive line in the league okay teddy bridgewater had a cluster bleep of an offensive line with an offensive scheme that was geared more towards the running game and he got sacked 44 freaking times okay and still put up the same numbers as the guy that we have right now case keenum who by the way football outsiders has uh the minnesota vikings as the fourth best pass protecting offensive line in the league he is on pace to getting sacked just 11 times, okay? They both put up the same numbers, but the difference is one quarterback had to fight through hell just to put up the same numbers that Case Keenum is doing right now, and the difference is Teddy Bridgewater was getting knocked upside the head every other play with Matt freaking Khalil as the left tackle, and Case Keenum isn't getting a grass stain on his jersey. So the, the idea if you put Teddy Bridgewater with this much better offensive line and the much better offensive uh, scheme that they've got going on, I expect them to thrive. I expect them to do a good job. But having said that, obviously don't just throw them out there just for the hell of it. I'm staying consistent on that, okay? I'm not saying that. You are 6-2. and two, you got a good streak going. Let's see what happens. Let the opportunity present itself. But for everyone being so dismissive, of oh, Teddy Bridge, oh, we've seen all we need to see. Case Keenum, there's nothing to talk about. He's done a good job. He has earned this. He hasn't earned anything, okay? He's earned the right to keep being the starting quarterback until he messes up. But he has not earned the right to be the starting quarterback outright, okay? Let's just call it what it is. He's done a good job, a very good job. But the fact that you've got everything going for you, you're not getting sacked. You're on pace to get sacked just 11 times this year. And you could put up the same numbers as Teddy Bridgewater did in 2015, who was fighting for his life, scratching and clawing, putting up the same numbers. I'm sorry. I want to see what Teddy Bridgewater can do. So that's all I'm going to say on that. Obviously, you trust the coaching staff to make the right decision. We'll have to see. I wouldn't expect them to play in the Washington Redskins game. We'll see as far as when they eventually put him in there. But if Case, if Case Keenum all of a sudden – just kicks ass out there, and I made the comparison to 2013's Josh McCown. If he does that, then great. Great. I want this team to win. There's, I don't care who's the quarterback. I want this team to win. But as far as the upside, because you got – what? what is the end game? What is the goal? What is your aspirations if you're a Minnesota Vikings fan? Are you just going to be happy just to make it into the playoffs? Because Case Keenum can do that. I'll give you that. Case Keenum with this defense and this offensive line and these weapons that we have, Case Keenum can get you in the playoffs. Can he win you a Super Bowl? Absolutely not. Not to say that, you know what, I'm not even going to say absolutely not. Not to say that it can't be done. You've seen teams like the uh, uh, Baltimore Ravens back in, what, 2000 when Trent Dofer was the quarterback. Or the Broncos a couple of years ago where they had Peyton Manning, who was not the same Peyton Manning before when he first got there when he was breaking all those records in Denver. He was not the same uh, Peyton Manning when they won the Super Bowl with Denver. Their defense did the work. Not to say that it can't happen, but if Teddy Bridgewater is going to perform like he did in 2015 with a much better offensive line, with better protection and a better offensive game, game calling plan, you have a better shot with Teddy Bridgewater. That's assuming he comes back. And then not only that, if you're just dismissive of, of him right now, it's like, oh, Teddy Bridgewater, we've seen enough of him. This is Case Keenum's team, and there's nothing to talk about. Here's the other factor that you're missing. If he walks away, right, 
if the Vikings do what those for those fans that want Te- that not necessarily, I don't know if you want Teddy gone or you're just done with him on the record saying, oh, he sucks, whatever. He he wasn't even that good. He walks away and he goes somewhere else and he kicks ass. Then how are we going to feel after that? So we got to see what this dude can do because he's going to be an unrestricted free agent. We got to make a decision. Sam Bradford is gone. OK, so now we're left with Case Keenum and Teddy Bridgewater. Now, obviously, this free agency, Drew Brees is going to be an unrestricted free agent. Aaron Rodgers could opt out of his contract. Wouldn't that be something? But you can't just, with the, with the history of quarterbacks that we've had, I'm tired of seeing, you know, dudes like Christian Ponder and Tavares Jackson. And not to say that Case Keenum is that. Case Keenum is better than Christian Ponder ever was, okay? But I'm just saying, potentially, if that upside is greater with Teddy Bridgewater, then you owe it to this franchise to find out. So, anyway, done talking about that. Going to move on to the Green Bay Packers real quick. And I'm going to give a shout out to Rick Spielman. I've been very critical of him. But real quick, we're going to take a quick break. I'm Jay. And I'm Matt of the hashtag NFZ, a.k.a. No Fly Zone. Now officially part of the BGC Sports Network. You can also find the show on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com backslash spell it out, hashtag NFZ and the Apple Podcast app. Now let's kick it back over to Realistic Randy. And the mediocre at best sports podcast. So that's Matt and Jay of the No Fly Zone uh, podcast. Uh, Jay used to have his own podcast, the Jay Says Podcast. I was on his show once. I mentioned it in the last podcast. I was on his show once. We talked Cowboys and Vikings. Uh, There's some really cool cats, man. You should go ahead and and give them a listen and uh, go from there. So anyway, going to talk about the Green Bay Packers real quick. And something that that made me, not even necessarily that made me, because I've been very, I've been critical of Rick Spielman. I've never hovered. I've hovered my finger around the fire Rick Spielman button, but I never pressed it. My whole thing was the offensive line, the way that he, quote unquote, built the offensive line over the last several years has been horrendous. And this was the last year, especially with this defense that we have in their prime to waste it away. Potentially, again, if the offensive line looked anything similar to what it did last year, I said that Rick Spielman should be fired. And I was very skeptical of it. But so far, the offensive line has done very well. I don't know if it's necessarily because of Rick Spielman or if it's because of Pat Shermer calling up the best plays to make this offensive line look good. But I will say this, Riley Reef looks better than Matt Khalil ever did for the Minnesota Vikings. So, look, Rick Spielman, I've as critical as I've been of him. I've been very, very uh, as far as giving him praises. As far as look, when he traded for Sam Bradford, I said that's the absolute right move to do. As far as building this defense like he has, he's done a great job. My problem with Rick Spielman is that he's a damn good GM. Okay, let's not get it twisted. But too many times he tries to get cute. Rick Spielman's that guy that builds up. He builds up, let's say, like a 1964 classic Mustang. And all, he, all you got to do, he's, he's got the tires on, he's got the transmission in, everything ready to go, the engine is all in. All you got to do is put motor oil in the car. Just put some motor oil in the car, and it's good to go. But Rick Spielman, before putting motor oil in the car, he was like, you know, we got to get some tint for the windows. But like, well, Rick, we, okay, well, we don't necessarily need tinted windows. Let's just let's put oil in the car so we can go. Alshon Jeffrey was that tinted window that he wanted to go after last year. He tries to get cute too many times but he's still a damn good GM and so far it's worked out well for him so I'm not I bring I bring him up because of this the Green Bay Packers right so they lost Aaron Rodgers uh, after they uh, they they lost to the Minnesota Vikings this was week uh, one two three four five this was week six so the Green Bay Packers they've been without Aaron Rodgers for the last three weeks going into the fourth week so almost a month now and uh, since then the loss of Aaron Rodgers, I wouldn't say exposed because I think any casual fan even recognized this. And I would even think that Green Bay Packers fans even knew this a long time before Aaron Rodgers went out. As far as the, their team is just terrible. OK, their defense has been just garbage for the last several years, even with Aaron Rodgers there. He's had to mask all that crap that they've got going on. The fact that that team even made it as far as they did, the runs that they've had is a credit to Aaron Rodgers. As far as with Ted Thompson and Mike McCarthy, I'm sorry. The way that they put this team together and and their play calling and everything that they've had going on minus Aaron Rodgers has been lazy. It's been pathetic. And I wouldn't be surprised if Aaron Rodgers all of a sudden opts out of his contract and say, you know what the hell with this? I'm going to go somewhere else. It is just absolutely ridiculous. And I don't want to hear nothing about 
well, you know, we lost Aaron Rodgers, so, you know, there, there's, there's nothing else we can do. Well, that's baloney, okay, because first off, like I mentioned, Rick Spielman, we lost Teddy Bridgewater. We went after Sam Bradford right last year, and even still, we lost – we lost Sam Bradford now, and we've got Case Keenum, and guess what? The Minnesota Vikings are 6-2. and two. Why? Because he's built this defense up. He's got the weapons that we have with Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs. All right, he got Riley Reef. We have an offensive line that's looking pretty, pretty damn good to where all of a sudden we're asking our quarterback not to screw up. The Denver Broncos, right? They won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Their quarterback wasn't great. In fact, Peyton Manning went down the middle of the season to bring in Brock Osweiler, and he wasn't necessarily all that great. I mean, he was better than Peyton Manning was that year, but they brought back Peyton Manning, and he was a, des a pretty, he was pretty much pedestrian, damn near disaster in the Super Bowl, but they won anyway. Why? Because of their defense and everything that John Elway built into that team. And then you go back to the New England Patriots about a decade ago when they lost Tom Brady. They brought in Matt Castle, but the system that they had around them, they still finished 11-5 and five and barely missed the playoffs. To sit here, and I'm not saying that the Packers are doing this. I'm not paying attention to any quotes or anything that they're saying. But the idea that, well, we lost Aaron Rodgers, so of course the season's over. That's complete bull crap. That team has been built off of laziness, knowing that Aaron Rodgers would bail them out. So as far as feeling bad for them, I don't, because I'm sorry. We've been living that life as a Minnesota Vikings fans without a quarterback for most of our damn lives. The only quarterbacks that I've seen that's been worth a damn in my whole entire time being a Minnesota Vikings, Vikings fan since middle school was Dante Culpepper, uh, Brett Favre, Teddy Bridgewater, and Sam Bradford, and hopefully Teddy Bridgewater again. And Case Keenum and Brad Johnson, they weren't bad. They were pretty good. They were, they were decent quarterbacks. They didn't wreck the ship. Okay, I get that. But they built this team that we have now and several other examples of other teams that have built their teams. They lost their starting court. Alex Smith went down for the Niners a couple of years ago. They brought in Colin Kaepernick, and they ended up going to the NFC Championship game a couple of times, even a Super Bowl. It's been lazy. They should be fired. But, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and be mad if they don't, if, if, they, if Ted Thompson and Mike McCarthy don't get fired because that's just better news for us. Because if all we got to do is, is shut down Aaron Rodgers and not intentionally hurt him, and by the way, again, to reiterate, that was not a dirty hit by Anthony Barr. It happens all the time without a flag being called. But if all we have to do is focus, it, or focus on stopping Aaron Rodgers with our pass rush, Everson Griffin and Daniil Hunter, just go after Aaron Rodgers all the time because you know their defense is just god-awful, then hell, I'll take that any day of the week. But I don't feel bad for the Green Bay Packers whatsoever. It's pathetic. I didn't even watch that Monday night football game against the Detroit Lions. I watched the uh, the game cast. The game cast, you know, if you go on ESPN or any other time, when, it, regardless of the channels being played, there's the game cast. So it shows basically like graphic bars when a player is moving up. It just shows them moving just a line moving forward. Uh, it's kind of like Techno Super Bowl. But anyway, I watched it a little bit. And it was just, you know what? You knew this Green Bay Packers defense was terrible because I was watching the game cast. And all I saw when the Detroit Lions had the ball, they didn't punt not one time in that game. All you saw in that game for the game cast was a blue line moving up and up and up and up and up all the way down to the field. Marvin Jones here, Golden Tate here, uh, Abdullah here. They, they, it didn't matter. That team is terrible. All right. So stop being lazy. Build the team, and hopefully they learn moving forward what to do. They'll probably get a high draft pick. They've got what four wins on the season. They're four and four. I don't see. They might beat the Cleveland Browns on December tenth, but after that. Quite honestly, I don't see them winning another game. They're going, I think they're going to lose to the Bears. The Bears, they've got a better defense. Mitchell Trubisky, he's still finding his way. But I think the defense will be too much for Brett Hundley. Uh, Steelers, uh, the Buccaneers, like I said, the, the Cleveland Browns, they might be able to beat them. So they'll probably finish 5-11 and or 4-12, and assuming Aaron Rodgers doesn't come back. But that team is god-awful. And, and don't expect me or any other uh, legitimate, you know, objective-thinking football fan to give a crap about the Packers being just complete, just complete pieces of crap right now without Aaron Rodgers because that's all you've done is hide behind him. It's been lazy, it's been irresponsible, and you get what you deserve. So it, coming up next... Uh, let's, switch, let's talk some NBA real quick. My surprise, disappointments, and meh in the NBA as far as the, those that the surprise as far as what I'm actually shocked by, disappointments where, well, I didn't see this coming as far as, you know, in the negative light. And meh as in, yeah, I saw this coming the whole time. I'm not surprised one bit. Mediocre Best Sports Podcast with Realistic Randy. Bro, you cannot run from, yeah, because hurt people hurt people. Not hard to love people. So evil don't need you. I'm gone and won't see you. Wrong and I see me, nightmares, no dreaming, blocked and deleted. I'm feeling just so defeated.